To the victor goes the spoils. The old proverb is often true of modern warfare as well. During the Second World War, the German Wehrmacht made very intensive and extensive use of captured armour to fulfil a wide array of roles, from security vehicles to hulls used to create tank destroyers and self-propelled guns. Prior to 1941, the vehicles captured in the greatest numbers and used most intensively were French tanks, due to the fall of the country and its large tank force to Germany in May to June 1940. However, it was often swept under the rug that Germany captured and reused some British equipment too. A considerable number of armoured vehicles were left behind by the British Expeditionary Force as it evacuated France in June 1940. Of these, a number of Mark IV cruiser tanks were notable as these were, for a short time, actually employed by the Wehrmacht during Operation Barbarossa, albeit with poor results. Hello, and welcome to another Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. I'm your host Blue Moon, and today I'll be covering the Kreuzer Panzerkampfwagen MK 744 e or in other words, the use of the British Mark IV cruiser tank by the German army during World War II. If you like our videos and want to support us, please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to improve future Tank Encyclopedia content. Any help would be greatly appreciated. As its name indicates, the Cruiser Mark IV was the fourth adopted model of the series of British cruiser tanks, designed around high mobility at the cost of armour protection. The vehicle shared the A13 designation with the fairly similar cruiser tank Mark III, A13 Mark I, of which it was an improved version of. The main features of the design were front armour increased to 30mm from 14mm on the Mark III, a three-man turret armed with a 40mm two-pounder anti-tank gun, Christie suspension and a powerful 340 horsepower engine that allowed for a high maximum speed of 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour, which is even higher in trials. Overall, the design could be said to be fairly solid for the early war. A three-man turret was a feature not too common outside of the German medium tanks. The two-pounder gun had good performance against early German tanks, the design was fairly mobile, and 30mm of armour, though it would not protect against 37mm anti-tank guns, was still not on the particularly low end of highly mobile tanks of the same weight class and role as the Mark IV, such as the Soviet BT-7 for example. A number of cruiser Mark IVs were deployed with the 1st British Armour Division, sent to France as part of the British Expeditionary Force to fight against German troops. Though the Germans claimed the British lost 65 Mark IVs in France, only 40 appeared to have actually been deployed there, with the overestimation perhaps due to confusion with the very similar cruiser Mark III, A13 Mark I, and simple overestimation. With the campaign of France quickly turning disastrous after the German breakthrough at Sedan on the 13th of May 1940, the encircled British Expeditionary Force barely made it out of the famous Dunkirk episode, in which it left all of its heavy equipment, including any Mark IVs that had not been lost in combat, behind. The fall of France in 1940 had left the Germans with a tremendous quantity of captured tanks, or tanks abandoned with various degrees of potentially repairable damage, in their hands. The majority of these were French, and the Germans quickly set up infrastructure to recover these tanks and send them back to the French factories they captured for potential repair. A non-negligible amount of British tanks were also left behind. However, the issue was that, unlike for the French tanks, the Germans had not captured the factories that were producing these tanks or their spare parts alongside the fleet, which made repairing and reusing the British armour a much harder affair. This meant that, in general, British tanks were used in much smaller numbers and were much more discreet than their French counterparts in German hands. Among the vehicles that were recovered were at least nine Cruiser Mark IV tanks, the most modern cruiser type available to the British Army at the time. These were given the German designation of Kreuzer Panzerkampfwagen MK 744 e Kreuzer Panzerkampfwagen was a mere German translation of the British designation of cruiser tank. The number in the 700s indicates a tank, the E indicates a vehicle's country of origin, in this case United Kingdom English. These nine Cruiser Mark IV tanks were assigned to a rather curious armoured unit, in October of 1940, they were delivered to Panzerabteilung F 100. The F stood for Flampanzer. This was a unit centred around the Panzer II F Flamingo flamethrower tanks, with the Kreuzer Panzer added alongside some Panzer IIs to provide more general purpose supporting fire for the more specialised vehicles. It appears that, outside of these nine cruiser tanks, some others, perhaps up to six, were sent to the German trial centre at Kummersdorf to be evaluated and a small number of others may have been used by security units, though this is not documented. Panzerabteilung F100 was stationed in the Dutch city of Tenergen in the village of Zamslach, located in the southern part of the Dutch province of Zeeland, 
just north of the Belgian border. It stayed there from October of 1940 to May of 1941. During this time, the unit appears to have taken part in exercises in preparation for the hypothetical invasion of Great Britain, Operation Seelover, Sea Lion. It appears that at least one of the vehicles was loaded into some sort of landing barge during an exercise. As such, in the pretty much materially impossible scenario in which Seelova could have occurred, one would have likely seen a small number of Kreuzer panzers used by the Germans against their original manufacturers. Though details on the nature of the tank stay in the Netherlands is unclear, the may more pragmatically have been used to familiarise German tankers with the vehicles they would have faced fighting the British, a role in which they could have provided a useful tool. In May of 1941, Panzerabteilung F100 moved from its location in Zeeland to the Polish town of Murawana Goślina, north of Poznania, and later near the Soviet border at Szelce. The unit was attached to the Axenta Panzer Division and was to support its advance into the Soviet Union. Panzerabteilung F100 comprised of three companies. On the 22nd of June 1941, it appears to have had at its disposal, outside of the nine Kreuzer Panzers, five Panzer Freeze, 25 Panzer IIs, and its main force of 42 Flampanzer II Flamingos. By this point, the cruisers had been in German service for several months, and had received a number of changes to integrate them into the German units. Their original tracks had been replaced with the tracks from the Panzer II Aufs D1. The reasons behind this are unclear, but may very well be logistical, particularly as the Panzer II Fs also operated by the unit were typically converted from Aufs D chassis. The vehicles had also received no-tech lights and shelves to hold jerry cans. One was given a tow hook to tow the French trailer originally designed for the Renault UE, which was widely used by the unit. Kreuzer Panzers numbered number 141 to 144, 243 and 2 with numbers starting with 24 but with the last number unidentified have been found. As the first number in the German tank numbering system indicates the company the vehicle served in, it appears the Kreuzer Panzer served in at least two of the unit's three companies. With three numbers missing, the third company may very well have had British Beuterpanzers as well. Within the fairly diverse fleet of armoured vehicles operated by such a small unit, the Kreuzerpanzer were, alongside the Panzer Freeze, the tanks with the best anti-tank capabilities, far exceeding the 20mm autocannons of the Panzer II, let alone the flamethrowers of the Flamingos. As such, the tanks being distributed in the unit's companies may have been undertaken in order to provide protection to the flamethrower and autocannon armed panzers against Soviet tanks. The two-pounder was a very decent anti-tank gun by 1940. By 1941, it would still have easily disposed of most Soviet tanks, the likes of the T-26, the BT-5, BT-7 or T-28. However, it would have largely struggled against the T-34s and could realistically only penetrate them from the sides and at fairly short ranges. Against KVs, the gun was fairly hopeless to do anything outside of potentially damaging the tracks. As Panzerabteilung F100 headed into the Soviet Union alongside Axein to Panzer Division, it was heavily engaged in a number of battles, including the Battle for Brest Fortress, and less than 10 days into the operation was already past Minsk. However, the service of the British tanks in Operation Barbarossa would be very short. While there was no details on the precise performance of the tanks, the Kreuzer Panzers would likely have proven very vulnerable to any form of Soviet anti-tank opposition. More than their thin armour protection though, the final blow to the vehicle service within the Wehrmacht appears to have been a question of reliability. With few spare parts, most tanks swiftly suffered breakdowns which could not be easily solved. It is known that by the 11th of July 1941, not even a month into Barbarossa, no Kreuzer Panzers were left operational and this appears to have been unchanged all the way to Panzerabteilung F100 being retired from the front in November of 1941. Though it is possible that some Beuter Panzer Mark IVs were still serving as some security units in other parts of German-controlled Europe, there does not appear to be any evidence confirming this, and as such, German use of the Kreuzer Panzerkampfwagen MK Wehr 742A may very well have ended with the first weeks of Barbarossa. Despite its short life in the German army, the Kreuzer Panzer MK Wehr 740 a remains an interesting example of the large variety of uses Germany made for its Beuterpanzers during the war, and has the dubious honour of being one of the few Beuterpanzer types used on the front lines during Operation Barbarossa, albeit only for a short period of time. This concludes our video on the Kreuzer Panzerkampfwagen MK Wehr 740 a if you liked this video, please leave a like in the subscription. You can find more information relating to this vehicle in the full article which is linked in the description. If you like what we are doing and want to let us continue working on these videos, 
please consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All the funds will be allocated to improving our articles and videos for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.